Hello there, Michael Lewis here. Welcome to Stewarding Land and Resources for the Common Good. Well, you might be surprised to learn that my take on the evidence in Kate Raworth's graphic seems to suggest um, the current system is not exactly fit for purpose of stewarding land and resources for the common good. I got to wondering, uh, what, what would Carl Paulani say if he had lived to see Kate's work as well as take this course? I think he would surely see that the double movement was at work. On the one hand, destruction wrought by the dominant system is more and more obvious. On the other hand, resistance is growing everywhere and millions of us are busy trying to do our best to innovate and diffuse and scale what is working already. Whether we will bend the curve of history, well, uh, we cannot say. And I think Carl's answer, uh, if he were here, might just be, well, what else are you gonna do? It just makes common sense. So let's land who owns it, for what purpose, with what consequences for people and planet are not new questions. From Adam Smith to Karl Marx to Paul Anye to Milton Friedman, the interactions between land, labor, and capital and the various theories all these thinkers put forward continue to shape the politics of our time. One thing is clear among these thinkers. The enclosure of commons lands and resources in England by powerful people led them to acquiring private title and that this transfer of ownerships were the seeds from which the capitalist system emerged. David Harvey, who you're going to meet uh, in this module refers to this historical and ongoing process as accumulation by dispossession. Accumulation by dispossession. But there's pushback on many fronts, taking land out of the so-called free market into different kinds of ownership is happening in many places in small but strategic ways. Models having impacts, positive impacts, on the affordability of shelter and workspace and access to agricultural land for a new generation of farmers, uh, ecosystem restoration. Uh, these, these, uh, good selection of these are introduced in, these in this module. Our colleague, uh, Gar Elperovitz, who you're going to meet in, in module eight, he calls these kinds of models prefigurative. That is, they may not yet be at a scale to usher in massive systems change by themselves. However, they are critical because they incarnate the essence of what we need to nourish, amplify, and grow as we struggle to set in place what Gar calls the irreversible conditions for systems change. As you're going through the module, uh, keep in mind the multi-level perspective, if you would. You will surely see the landscape factors that are at work, the big picture, and you'll see niche innovations at work and how they're struggling to di be diffused and scaled and maybe blocked by the system, the regime level, as MLP calls it. Uh, so keep it in mind you know, those three levels as you go through the resources. Use it to map the different levels at work and, and keep note of what you think is supporting uh, or thwarting uh, systems change. You're going to encounter a lot in this module that's small and large to engage your mind and your heart. I look forward to re reading your reflections online, feeding back to you at some point in the week. So have a thoughtful, inspiring, and meaningful week. Okay, talk to you later.